Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Matt, here. Today, I'm going to be doing my first, um, actually, second virtual DJ tutorial. Um, this tutorial is going to be just going over the basics of mixing dubstep. Um, I'm not going to be using any copyrighted tracks in this video because I don't want this video to um, receive any copyrighted uh, issues or anything. But um, So I'm going to go ahead and open up um, Virtual DJ. Uh, there's a download link to download Virtual DJ in the description below. Um, all you got to do is download it. and there's If you don't want to pay for it, then you can download the DJ Home Free, which is a version I have, as you can see. Um, I'm getting the full version though soon. Um, also, you can get a piece of equipment, a hardware called the Newmark Mixtrack Pro. It is a mixing deck. There's a link to that in the description. Um, it comes with a full version of um, Virtual DJ. It, has, it actually uses Virtual DJ to, um, to um, as a so as software, and you control it with you control all this stuff with a piece of hardware, so it's a lot better, which is what I do. So. Um, so let's go ahead and um, start with the basics. All right, so up here you have your scroll bar. What this is used for what this is used for is for syncing tracks. Um, syncing tracks is useful if you want to keep the tracks um, two tracks that are playing together in beat. You don't want them to be like um, you don't want the bass drops to be you know out of sync and shit. Um, right here we have the song title um, and the song artist. Right here we have the beats per minute. Um, like the tempo of the song. We have hot cues, I'll go over that here in a second. Um, we have elapsed time, we have all the time um, info here. We have just an overview of the entire track and it's been visualized so you can fast forward or rewind whatever you want. Um, this here are track tables. Some people use these, I don't I never really use this. Um, you might if you want to though. Um, right here you have some different effects that you might want to use sometimes. Um, backspin. Let me show you. It. Let me get actually get a non-copyrighted track. One second, guys. Um. So. Um. So what B uh, what B grid does? The first one, uh, B grid. You're playing a song, and you hit B grid. As you can see, it kind of skipped ahead in the track, but it, it stayed it stayed on the same time. Um, that's what B grid does. Does backspin is pretty cool. I use it sometimes when transitioning. Um, let's go ahead and play the song. Three, two, one. As you can see, you kind of backspin the track and stop it. Um, also, you can use break. It does the same thing, but instead of backspinning it, it just slowly pauses it. Let me go ahead and show you that. As you can see, it slowly brought, um, slowed it down and brought it to a stop. Um, next, um, distorter. It kind of it brings the bass up very, very high and makes it sound all distorted. It does not sound good at all, but it's useful sometimes. I don't know. But let me show you what that does. As you can see, it sounds a little trashy and um, doesn't sound good. Um, next, we have phaser. This um, just kind of phases in and out in different tones. Let me go ahead and show you that. Um, as you can see, it just went, it kind of went, yeah, kind of like faded, faded in and out. Um, reverb. Most of these are the same. Um, like, pretty much, they're just different effects. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Key changer changes the key of the song without changing the speed. So yeah, yeah. Key change drawing. You can change the. That's a key changer. Um, here we have samples. Um, sound samples. These aren't. I never really use these ever, but you might sometimes. We have siren. Some rap artists might use it. Um, we have saxophone. And I've never used it. Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up. Yeah, um, these are all retarded. You can add your own though if you want. Um, you can record your own by hitting this record button. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So um, that's pretty much it for the effects. Um, next we have loop. What loop does is whichever one of these buttons is selected. For instance, one beat, two beat, four beats, five, eight beats, sixteen beats, or thirty-two beats. If one beat is selected, um. Let's, let's go and put it here. Um, it'll loop the beat that you just that you put it on. It'll, it'll loop it over and over again. But you put it if you put it on two, 
it'll loop it for two beats, so it'll be. Or even uh, four. Or even 32. Put on 32, it'll play for about a minute. And then, and then repeat the part that you put on. So that's um, loop. I, I use that a lot. Um, if I have like a steady beat going I'll, and I want to transition, I'll go ahead and turn on the loop about uh, 8 or 16 beats. And um, yeah. So the crossfade, the crossfade is which um, track is playing. So if I have, let me get another uncopyrighted track here. So I have, this is my block in Apollo playing. If I have both these playing at once, let's see. And I slowly bring it over. Changes which track is being played. Um, these volume buttons, I never really use these. You might, um, if, you, if you have a Newmark Mix Track Pro, these are kind of a pain in the ass to handle um, with a mouse. I never really use these. Um, but next, we have the um, high, med, and low. What high, what low is, first of all, is the bass. It brings all of the bass out. So if you're playing a song that has lots of bass, like this, and you turn it all the way down. You can see it sounds like it's playing on an old fashioned radio. It has no beat bass. So we turn the mic up. Uh, we have med. It kind of takes out the, um, I guess, the trouble of the song. I'm um, actually, so let's see. Well, my boy, my boy. When we turn it all the way down, it kind of sounds like someone's putting their hand over the speaker. And you can, all you hear is like um, the basic beat of the song. And med, I mean, I, I'm sorry, high. What high is? Just takes the general quality out of the song. So yeah, and it tells us the same over here. Um, the gain is the general volume, volume of the, um, not the volume, but you know, the general quality and volume of the track. Hard to explain. Master is the um, volume of both tracks. If master is all the way down, you can't hear anything. Um, Q, I don't know what Q is. I'm not sure what Q does. You're probably not gonna use that. Use that. But um, you click this little scratch tab right here. I use this sometimes when I'm trying to find the drop of a song. For instance, right here. I'm gonna put the crossfade. Um, I'm trying to find the exact level of the um drop. Then I'll, I'll use the scratch tab to put it right on that drop line. And then I will use the Q points, which I'm going to explain right now. The Q points, um, these are very, 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 very useful. You're going to use them all the time. Um, Alright, so I, as you can see, I have the line on the drop, which is right on the drop of the song. Uh, if I put a Q point right here, um, as you can see, the Q point, Q point number one, it's right on the drop. So, if I, so if, even, if, even if the track's over here, and then click number one on the Q point. It'll skip right to that um, to that uh, drop, and there's three cue points. And to delete a cue point, all you have to do is see this small little white line. Right-click that, put your mouse right over it to where it's yellow. Right-click it and hit delete. So that's it. That's pretty much it for the top section. The bottom sections uh, just tracks and stuff. Um, I most people use their iTunes to put to load tracks, but you might want to use your dubstep folder, like your record music folder. Um, by going, you can go to my music, um, and then I like dubstep and have my own mixes. You guys can check out my mixes by the way; they're on my YouTube channel. Um, um, and then I have my dubstep folder with all my tracks on it. Um, but um, it automatically loads in your iTunes tracks. All you gotta do is click this iTunes tab right here. Go down to wherever your um, dubstep is. Mine's just under music because all I have on my iTunes is dubstep and some rock. Um, but, yeah, so that's how you load a track, to put a track onto one of the decks, all you gotta do is find the track you want, you can actually, you can also search it, I'll put, um, I'll just put one of my mixes on there, let's see, I'll put my, uh, I'll just put my cooking mix, all you gotta do is click it, and drag it onto the track, and it'll load, once all this visualization is done, you can go ahead and play it, so, um, that's pretty much it guys um, you can also record your tracks that you can also record your mixing 
um, uh, you can hit config and um, click the small little um, dot 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 box right here. You can choose which uh, folder it sends to. I send mine to my um, to my um, my mixes folder that I made. Sorry. Um, so yeah, you can also change the bit rate. I just keep have my, have my at well, 192. Um, you might want to go ahead and put it at MP3 format, save as MP3 because I don't know what I do. Um, make sure prompt if overwrite is not checked, split and multiple files is not checked. I mean, sorry, prompt if overwrite is checked, split and multiple files is not checked. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. I'll do it. my next tutorial is going to be on transitioning. Um, <coughs> sorry. My next tutorial is going to be on transitioning, so go ahead and uh, stay tuned for that, subscribe, and um, I will see you guys later. Peace out.